Chemistry lecture number 97, Neutralization Reactions and Titration. An acid solution contains more hydrogen ion than hydroxide ion. An acid solution can be neutralized by adding a base which contains hydroxide. The added hydroxide reacts with excess hydrogen ion to form H2O. So here's the excess hydrogen ion. You add a base to it, it combines, and forms a water molecule. Acids and bases neutralize each other to form water and salt. Salt is a crystal composed of the negative ion of an acid and the positive ion of a base. Here's an example of a neutralization reaction. Hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide, which is a base, combine to form water and salt, NaCl. Now in this reaction, the H plus from HCl uh, combines with the OH from the NaOH to form H2O. Now if the water is evaporated, the sodium ion from the sodium hydroxide combines with the chloride from the hydrochloric acid to form NaCl, also known as common table salt. So Na plus is the positive ion of the base combining with chloride, which is the negative ion of the acid. So when the positive ion of the base combines with the negative uh, ion of the acid, you get something called a salt. <coughs> Here are some more neutralization reactions that produce water and salt. Sulfuric acid and uh, potassium hydroxide form water and potassium sulfate, so this is a salt of potassium sulfate. Notice that we have two H2s, two hydrogens from here, combining with two hydroxides to form two water molecules. And the next one we have nitric acid and calcium hydroxide form water and calcium nitrate salts two hydrogen ions from the nitric acid combine with two hydroxides to form two water molecules. And then this is carbonic acid and ammonium hydroxide form water and ammonium carbonate salts. Two hydrogen ions from the H2CO3 combine with the two hydroxides to form two water molecules. And then the last one, which is what we're going to show today, Acetic acid, this H, combines with the OH to form H2O. Now how can you tell if an acid solution has been neutralized? One way to do it is to add an indicator. This is a substance that changes color when the pH of a solution reaches a certain level. Phenolphthalein is an indicator that changes from a clear to a pink color when a solution becomes slightly basic. This means that the indicator will not change color when the H plus solution exactly equals the hydroxide solution. So before I continue, let me show you a uh, slightly basic solution that's had phenolphthalein added to it. Okay, so you notice the nice pink color. So it has this pink color because this solution is slightly basic. Not quite neutral, just slightly basic. All right. So since it's uh, pink when it's slightly basic, it means that um, it doesn't show when the H plus solution exactly equals the OH solution. But it does change color when the two concentrations are very close. So we use it to get a general measure of when an acid solution has been neutralized. <clears throat> if we know the concentration of the base that neutralized an acid, uh, we can determine the concentration of the acid. And this is done through a process called titration. Acid titration is where a basic solution of a known concentration is slowly added to an acid solution of unknown concentration. When the acid solution is neutralized, uh, the volume of the basic solution that was added is measured. The concentration of the acid is then determined mathematically. A burette is used to add the basic solution to the acid. Now, a burette is a long measuring tube filled with the basic solution. and There are numbers on the side of the burette. As the solution is dispensed, you can see how much solution is left by matching the level of the liquid to the numbers. Let me see, do I want to do the next one or do I want to show you a burette? Okay, so let me show you what a burette looks like. This burette I'm going to show you contains uh, sodium hydroxide. And bear with me while I jiggle the camera. You might get a little motion sick, so I apologize for that. Uh, take that out. And hold on. Here we go. Okay. 
So, this is a burette, all right, a long glass tube, and this is filled with sodium hydroxide. All right? And if we look even closer, you see there are numbers along the side of it, and the liquid in here shows what the uh, level of the uh, sodium hydroxide is. And then what happens is the sodium hydroxide comes out of this tip right here and it uh, is used to deliver sodium hydroxide uh, to uh, the acid that we're going to titrate. All right, uh, let me see. So let me put this back. Apologize for the motion sickness here. And bear with me while I make a minor adjustment. I'm going to add some more sodium hydroxide to here. Make sure we have enough. Okay, hang on. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's continue. <clears throat> now, I'm going to titrate 10 milliliters of acetic acid solution, uh, or otherwise known as vinegar, with one molar sodium hydroxide solution. So, Here's my acetic acid solution, and I added some acetic acid in here, or vinegar, and then I poured a little bit of, I poured some water in to dilute it to make the uh, liquid visible. And there's also some phenolphthalein in here. So the neutralization reaction that's going to happen is, I've got vinegar, I'm going to add sodium hydroxide from the burette, and it's going to turn this into water and sodium uh, acetate. Now, if it takes 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide solution to neutralize the acid, uh, the concentration of the acetic acid is probably also one molar. If it takes less than 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, the concentration of the acid will be less than one molar. And if it takes more than 10 milliliters of sodium hydroxide, uh, the concentration of acid will be greater than one molar. So that's roughly how we're going to get a rough estimate of what the concentration of the acid is. Now we can use math to calculate the acid concentration with more precision, but I'll save that for the next lecture. So, I'm going to add phenolphthalein to the acid, so this contains phenolphthalein, which will cause it to turn pink when it gets neutralized. Alright, so when the acid is neutralized, the solution will turn pink. So, let me sort of show you what we've got set up so far. Pardon me while I make you a little bit motion sick. So. The level is, the liquid has been poured up into it until it reaches the zero level. And then this level is going to come down as we add uh, sodium hydroxide to the base. So if it comes down to three, it means that we've added three milliliters of base solution and so on. All right. Let me make some adjustments here. I'm going to move back a little bit. Okay. All right. Can you see that all right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn uh, this knob here. Base is going to come out of here. And this solution... Once it's neutralized, it'll turn pink and stay pink. Right, and when I first do it, it'll turn pink, but that pink color will disappear. All right, here we go. So that's one milliliter. So it turned pink, but then if I do that, the pink color disappears. So let me add two mils. Okay, so now that's two mils of base added. If I do that, pink color disappears. So it's not neutralized yet, but we're getting there. Three mils. Pink color disappears. Four mils. Pink color disappears. And you can see the pink color better if I just remove this cloth. Alright, so another. 
five mils. Right, it's turning pink, but the pink color disappears when I shake it. Right. Six mils. Oh, Ooh, we're getting really close. All right, now, at this point when you get close, uh, you do it a drop at a time. And a really good chemist can get a single drop to make it turn pink and stay a permanent pink color. I don't know if I'm that good, but let's see how we can do. So just a tiny amount. And... And I think that's it. Okay, so... It's a pink color, and well, it's starting to fade a little bit. Forget the criteria, it has to stay pink for like a minute or something like that. But we're getting very, very close to the end point. Let's add a, just a little drop or two. <coughs> okay, and that's it. So our solution has now been neutralized, it's turned pink, it stayed pink. At this point, the concentration of H plus is approximately equal to the concentration of hydroxide. Actually, there's a little bit more hydroxide, but it's close enough to get a general idea. All right, so the acid has been neutralized. And let's see what volume of acid we had to add. We had to add about, let's see, well, let me just take this off so you can see a little bit better. Take this out me. Okay. Alright, so the volume of acid was, or base, was about six milliliters. All right. So it took six milliliters of uh, NaOH to neutralize ten milliliters of the acid. So that means that the concentration of the acid is going to be less than one molar. Maybe it's, you know, 0. 0.7 something or 0. 0.6 something. Ugh. Okay, so that's how you do a titration. And in the next lecture, we'll show you how we can use this information knowing that we had six mils of base to neutralize the acid and uh, figure out the concentration of the acid. All right, and there's some more important information I want to give you here. Do that. Okay. I need to give thanks to uh, Dr. Cindy Cribbs for loaning the burette that I used in today's lecture. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 97, Neutralization Reactions and Titration.